Welcome to Temple of Health Radio Show. This is Dr. Susan Cobb, and today I'm pleased to have as my guest Garnet Schulzhauser, who is the author of Dancing Forever with Spirit, Astonishing Insights from Heaven. Um, Garnet has an interesting story. He is a retired attorney in um, Canada, um, Vancouver Island, um, and he uh, is the author of a previous book, Dancing on a Stamp, he was attorney at, he was an attorney at the time that Dancing on the Stamp was written, um, after a, uh, homeless man named Albert, who was actually a guide of his in disguise, um, came, uh, out and introduced himself in the physical. And I'll let Garnet tell that story when we get on. It's fascinating. And that was because Garnet was supposed to have um, the experience of meeting his guide in the physical and then learning about these other realms of uh, existence, these other dimensional realms. And I just wanted to say that we've had a meditation group that's met that has met every week since 1990. And just about everything in the book Dancing Forever with Spirit has been um, introduced to us through this group. So all of the different concepts, including the information about Jesus, has been told to us. We don't have our spirit guides, um, you know, popping out in front of us as uh, as he did, um, but we have our spirit guides helping educate us in a group setting. And the information is exactly the same as what is in this book. So if that, and, and I know other people with groups similar to ours with very similar information. So obviously there is a overall plan for the higher dimensions to educate those who are ready in the lower dimensions to help with the shift that is coming. And it's a great book for information on the shift because um, his guide is, telling it in a way that we can understand in this dimension. Thanks, Garnet, for joining us. Thank you for having me, Susan. I'm delighted to be here. Well, would you like to tell the listening audience a little bit about yourself and how um, you got started on this journey? Well, I was raised uh, in uh, in Canada as, in a, a very strict Roman Catholic family. That's my background. I was an mm-hmm. old boy, and I went to church quite often and followed all the rules. And then um, when I hit my 20s and 30s, I started questioning a lot of the, of the, the church dogma, a lot of their beliefs, because it, they, they started to not make sense to me. And then mm-hmm. by, by the time I hit my 40s, I had rejected most of them. And then I was sort of in no man's land, casting about for a new paradigm to latch on to. Mm-hmm. And I was looking for all the, all the eternal answers, uh, uh, questions, the answers to the questions that we all ask ourselves at one time or another. So ones like, uh, you know, who am I? Why am I here? what's my purpose in life, and what happens to me after I die. And so um, then that one fateful day, this was in 2007, when I was still practicing law, um, I encountered my, uh, my spirit guide, Albert, and I got all of my answers, which I recounted in my first book, Dancing on a Stamp. So tell us a little bit about that day when you first met Albert. Well, I was, uh, yeah, I was still practicing law. It was a sunny afternoon uh, in May of uh, 2007, I went for a stroll on the street in front of our office building just to get some fresh air. And I was walking down the street for oh, a block or so, and all of a sudden a homeless man jumps out of, uh, seemingly comes out of nowhere and jumps in front of me. And um, he looked like a very typical homeless man with uh, you know, long, greasy hair, scraggly beard, dirty clothes. Um, and my usual tactic when I had encountered these people on the street before was to do a quick sidestep and go around. But right. this guy was special. He, and, and, and what held me in place was his amazing, dazzling blue eyes that sort of shone mm-hmm. like two little blue stars. And uh, he, his, his gaze was penetrating deeply within me, right down to the depths of my soul. And I felt like mm-hmm. he knew everything about me, even though we had never met before. And mm-hmm. at the same time, his gaze was sending me this the wave of pure, unconditional love that was just sort of infusing my whole body with an amazing sense of, of peace and security and well-being. Mm-hmm. So it was an amazing experience, I, it's something I'd never encountered before. I was like a deer caught in the headlights, and I just sort of stood there basking in the glow of this man's gaze. Uh, mm-hmm. And I'm not sure how long I was there. It was sort of like a time warp. Uh, he, he broke my reverie by saying suddenly, why are you here? And then he quickly disappeared into a nearby store. 
And uh, <laughs> when I collected my wits, finally, I decided mm-hmm. I should go and find him. So I went into the same store he had disappeared into. There was only one entrance and exit. I hadn't seen him come out, but he was nowhere in the mm-hmm. store. And mm-hmm. I walked back on the street and uh, up and down, tried to find him, but he was uh, mm-hmm. he was gone. So that that evening, I resolved to myself that I had to come back the, the very next day to see if I could find him. Um, right. He, I mean, he really roused my curiosity, like, who was this guy anyway? Uh, mm-hmm. So next afternoon, same time, out on the same street, I, I went up and down uh, several blocks. And just as I was about to lose hope uh, of, of ever seeing him again, then I spotted him sitting by himself on a bench. Mm-hmm. So I, I walked up to him and I said, who are you? Why did you stop me the other day? And he right. said, I'm a soul just like you. I'm here to answer your questions and help you on your journey. Well, then, wow. <laughs> then my lawyer brain kicked in. and, and lawyers, <laughs> Your lawyer brain. Yeah. You, you, <laughs> you, you, never, funny. you can never lose your lawyer brain once, once yeah, you lose really. your lawyer. So uh, my, my, my skepticism kicked in, and I said yeah. to him, well, how do you think you could help me when you can't even help yourself? Because you've been, it looks like you've been sleeping on the street for weeks, and you smell mm-hmm. like a dead fish. Well, mm-hmm. uh, he just gave me a big smile and said, you know, looks can be deceiving. Because he That's said, right. <laughs> you, you look like you're a successful lawyer with everything under control, but we uh-huh. both know that's just a facade. Ah, uh, there you go. He said, you could turn tail, walk back to your office, and see if you can find the answers you've been searching for on mm-hmm. all those emails waiting for you on your computer. Or you can uh-huh, there you go. And sit down and have Talk a to me, yeah. <laughs> yeah, and, I, and, and then luckily my answer said, said I have to, yeah, I really have to sit down. Uh, what do I have to lose, a half an hour of my day? Yeah. But I sat down and I started, we started a conversation. That was a yeah. conversation that went off, off and on over a period of several months after that. Mm-hmm. I found out early on that um, he was actually one of my spirit guides in disguise. And mm-hmm. that I was the only one who could see him in the flesh. Like if, right, if right, anyone yeah. else passing by, they would have seen You were me. talking to yourself. <laughs> talking to myself on the bench. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So, so we uh, hope you had your Bluetooth in your ears so they didn't think you were crazy, huh? <laughs> <laughs> I didn't, actually. <laughs> so, oh, well. <laughs> uh, he, he was, uh, so it was an amazing conversation. He, he yeah. never uh, preached or lectured to me. It was yeah. just like two friends having a chat over a beer, um, and he uh, mm-hmm. gave me some amazing revelations. And, and early on, he told me that, um, you know what? I want you to write a book about what we're talking about. And so that mm-hmm. was a, sort of a surprise to me, like, okay, so he, he obviously had an end game plan for me. Yeah. He wanted me to write a book, and that, that resulted right. in dancing on a stamp. Um, yeah. But, uh, well. it, it, you know, and after the first three encounters where he was in physical form with, uh, in, mm-hmm. in front of me, uh, after that, he just was a voice in my head, and we communicated right. by telepathy. Um, yeah. And when I, when I said to him, well, wh- why did you show up as the homeless man? He said, I wanted to ease you into the conversation, because if I mm-hmm. had just started talking to you by telepathy, you might have thought you were going crazy. That's this true. Way, yeah. This way, uh, I, I recognized when he start, started talking to me by telepathy, I recognized his voice, knew who mm-hmm. it was, and I was not concerned. Yeah. So it right. was a very right. very clever way of, of getting me into the into the conversation. And it sounds like Albert has a great sense of humor too. He really does. He, oh, absolutely. Uh, he, and he, yeah, he, 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 he never lost the chance to, to, to poke fun at me for all of my yeah. human foibles. Um, That's and, great. And he, and he loved a good laugh. And uh, I, I never knew sometimes when he would tell me something whether he was pulling my leg or whether it was the real truth. And, and, he, and yeah. he, he loved teasing me. So yeah, it was great. It was lots of fun. Uh, he, he told me that humor is alive and well. On the spirit mm-hmm. side, and that uh, so what he was doing is not unusual. It's not a serious place where people just sit no, on clouds and listen to harp music. They actually have uh, you know real exciting, challenging lives, and and humor is very much a part of that. So it was a very yeah. enjoyable conversation. Yeah, I have um, spirit doctors that help me, and it's it's really they do have a great sense of humor. I remember one time about to walk into the exam room, and one of them said, "You're not going to like her," you know, just like that. <laughs> And she was really difficult. I ended up liking her after I operated on her, but it was it was hard. You know, it was one of those relationships where you just really wish the patient had gone somewhere else. <laughs> you know, very difficult to take care of. But they were trying but, to warn you. But they're yeah. funny. Yeah, they're they war- You know, they're they're they have that little sense of humor that's really funny, and um, it it is fun. I mean, after you 
enter into this world of spirit communication, you really never experience loneliness because you're not alone. There's a huge area, I mean, there's huge numbers of relationships you can have in in spirit communication so you never feel lonely again it's it's uh it's really neat no it's very true and, and i certainly don't and and albert is just one of my spirit guides we all have mm-hmm. spirit guides as you know and they're always there uh, and they're yeah, always they sending us messages we don't necessarily always hear them or mm-hmm. understand them for what they are in my case of course albert was uh he came out very directly, and, and he did that for a purpose. He said, you know, you, we really need you to convey our message to uh, humanity, and so I have to come mm-hmm. and talk to you very directly. Most of the time, our guides, as you know, give us very subtle messages like flashes of intuition and words right. in our mind and uh, coincidental events and that kind of thing, and, and those are harder to detect. In my case, Albert, he basically hit me over the head with a two-by-four and said, here mm-hmm. I am, listen to what I have to say. So... Uh, which made it easier for me. I didn't have to sort of uh, try to discern uh, from the subtle messages what he was trying to tell me. And, and he did that for a purpose so that I could easily write my book. And, I and your book that. is and your book is very timely. I think, you know, the reason I did this radio show, irregardless of what was happening in my life, irregardless of anything, I always had to do this radio show, just like you had to write this book. Let's talk a little bit about what's going what's happening right now. Um, and why Albert, you know, at this time had you write the book, because it's very important to get this message out now. And I believe it's it's really critical, like in the next two or three years. It's like this is really the end of it. So we need to get the message out that people need to need, they need to understand what's happening. You know, so tell them tell tell our listening audience what Albert told you about what we're what these times are about that we're in well actually i got the, the, the i mean he gave me the message but it was reinforced when i, I he took me on an astral trip to the spirit side and i met mm-hmm. the council of wise ones there and uh, right. th- th- their message to me uh, was uh, you know look at where at a uh, humanity is at a crucial inflection point um right. and that um we have developed great technology but our emotional intelligence has not kept up mm-hmm. that's why we have uh, a lot of people have trouble controlling their negative emotions, fear, anger, hate, greed, right. and that sort of thing. And that results in, in wars and conflicts and genocide mm-hmm. and, and terrorist activities and murders and so on. Right. And, and they said, we really have to get control of that because we have enough uh, technology, we have weapons of mass destruction that, if unleashed, could destroy all life on our planet. And, and, and they don't want that to happen to us. They want us to sort of get our act together and and, uh, and and increase our vibrations, move our vibrations up so we can get into a, a higher vibrational earth where things are much nicer than they are here. And we have to do yeah. that in the next little while before things go really badly. And uh, so their message to us was go back to your, go back to earth, tell your fellow humans every, any way you can, you know, radio shows, books, mm-hmm. uh, that we really have to uh, uh, discard our negative emotions and embrace love and compassion fully uh, and if we do that, we can sort of get over this hump and move on to the next stage uh, before we destroy ourselves. And he and they cited a, examples in, in, in Earth's past where human civilizations had developed to a high degree and then crashed and burned, like Lemuria, mm-hmm. Atlantis, and several right. others we're not even aware of. And, and they said we're sort of right now at a similar stage, and they re- yeah. really don't want to see that happen again. And so they've been really yeah. doing, uh, sending a lot of messages in the last, uh, well, started, you know, 30, 40 years ago, the pace has been increasing, and they're channeling mm-hmm. messages through many people, like through you, Susan, uh, through mm-hmm. me to write books, uh, a lot of other radio hosts, people who write blogs, right. uh, people who speak at, at engagements, and our job uh, is to spread their message to everyone, because there's so many humans who, uh, you know, they're not even aware of what the problem is, uh, and so they have a hard time sort of overcoming the problem. So we have to spread the message, and uh, they're really trying to help us, and they're really sort of basically bombarding us in the last while with all kinds of messages uh, from spirit to many different channels all over the world. And, uh, and as you probably noticed, the pace of, uh, of people being opening their minds to, to spiritual concepts has increased a lot in the last while. I certainly have. Uh, and yeah. Albert told me that uh, if I had written my book in the 70s, uh, first of all, I probably wouldn't have written it. And then if I did, nobody mm-hmm. would have read it. Uh, right. Whereas now they weren't ready more, for it. They weren't right. ready. Whereas now more, there's more people mm-hmm. ready for it and uh, ready for your show and ready for my books. And uh, so our job is as messengers are uh, to spread the message as best we can. 
that hopefully we can convince enough other people to follow our lead and to uh, and to discard negative emotions and try to increase our vibration. One very important concept to understand is that each all life, no matter what dimension it's in, is residing at a certain vibrational level. But then there's a level above it and sometimes below it. And the level above it is is you can't it's here. I mean, it's right where you are, but you can't, your organs of perception can't see it because they're not tuned into it. So all of these dimensions exist simultaneously. So this new earth that we are talking about, the council says that we're ready to um, increase our vibrations here and then have a planetary as well as uh, all of the different kingdoms will ascend. Um, it, the new earth is already in existence, and like you said, um, Albert showed you that some of the previous um, uh, civilizations that were ready for it, like the Mayans, were able to ascend in mass. And that's something that has been confirmed for our group, too, that in mass, especially in times of danger, um, groups can ascend. So right now, the new earth that we're like targeted toward does exist it it's it's just that right now we're not in it we're in the old earth because we turn on the tv and we see all the terrorist information and the plane crashes and the disease and the starving and you know what earth you're in because you can you know you're you haven't reached the new earth you want to talk a little bit about what you learned about the new earth and what it's like yeah, well, he uh, Albert did take me there. We, we did a, a went to the dimensional doorway that he called it, and he took me to the new Earth. It's just Earth in a in a higher dimension, much higher uh, mm-hmm. vibration rate. But you, as you say, it exists simultaneously. It's right there. We just can't detect it. And mm-hmm. so it was amazing. I talked to uh, some people from a civilization in one of the one of the cities there, or you know, large village. And these were people who had their ancestors a long time ago had done a mass ascension from a civilization that was existing in Central America. And uh, mm-hmm. they, they did so because there was a, a barbarian mm-hmm. army encroaching on their territory, and they were, they were fear, fearful for their, for their lives and well-being, and their leaders, with the help of spirit, orchestrated a mass ascension. So they all rose mm-hmm. up, and they ended up in the New Earth, where, uh, where their uh, descendants are now happily living. It was really quite amazing. A beautiful, it was a, you know, a beautiful location. Um, the, the people there... Uh, lived a very idyllic uh, existence. There was no mm-hmm. negative emotions, no crime. They had no need for money. They didn't have to, you know, work nine to five to provide for themselves. Right. Um, they they lived in harmony with with their planet. They lived in harmony with uh, the other creatures on the planet. They didn't eat animal flesh. Um, mm-hmm. They ate food that was prepared from plants that were grown nearby. It was in liquid mm-hmm. form. Provided all the nourishment they needed. They had mm-hmm. learned to. Uh, to arrest the aging process uh, and to ward off uh, disease, and, and they learned how to repair their bodies if they suffered a, tra- a, a trauma. Uh, so mm-hmm. they all lived for a couple hundred years, um, and uh, they, uh, they were, had a very happy existence. They pursued knowledge and wisdom, um, lived together very peacefully, and it was uh, kind of the kind of place I thought, boy, wouldn't it be nice to live here? Um, and Albert said, well... You, you can. You just have to raise your vibrations high enough to match the vibrations of, of this earth, and you can get there, you and anyone else who's prepared to do that. Um, and, and so it was, uh, it was really a, a great goal, a place to shoot for. Um, and, mm-hmm. it, you know, I hope I can get there someday, if not in this life, maybe in another one. But um, it was really a, a, a nice, big, juicy carrot at the end of the stick that, that, that I could strive to get towards. And it's important for the listeners to understand that this is not heaven. This is actually, um, these people actually have physical bodies. They're just at a higher vibrational level. But in heaven, you actually visited heaven. You want to tell us the difference between this dimension and the higher dimension called heaven. Yeah, well, the new earth is still in the, in the physical plane. It just has a higher uh, vibration level than earth. Mm-hmm. Uh, spirit side, the, you don't have physical bodies. Uh, it, right. It's, it's, it's at, the, at, the, at the highest level, uh, and people there are. Uh, uh, of course, there's no negative emotions or uh, you know any, mm-hmm. any any pain or suffering or anything else. No need to eat food. Uh, no need to procreate. Um, no need to breathe. Uh, we're just mm-hmm. we're basically beings of energy uh, that mm-hmm. exist, uh, and that's sort of our true natural form. Well, that's how we started. 
and, and that's how we exist on the spirit side before we incarnate. Right. That's where we go back to, um, and that's sort of the highest level. And, and that's a that's a, you know if you can imagine it's even better than the new earth because not having mm-hmm. a physical body or having to eat is very much a, a, a it gives you a great sense of freedom. And the people there are on a, a, a path of evolution. Every every one of the souls wants to evolve, grow and evolve, and they do so by often by incarnating in the dense planes, uh, whether it be in the, our our dense plane or in the new earth. Um, and and they, they do so to learn and experience things, increase their wisdom. That helps with their evolution. So, so yeah, the new earth is not heaven, not, not the spirit side, but I did go to the spirit side, and it's, it's even more amazing. Um, not, nothing but pure, <laughs> unconditional love, um, and, mm-hmm. and, and people there um, are on a sense, have a sense of adventure that, you know, when they decide to incarnate on earth, uh, they mm-hmm. don't look at it as being, oh, no, uh, you know, why, why would oh, I Oh, no, there? not again. <laughs> yeah, not right. again. You know, we think that. When, when Albert first told me I could, yeah. I could come back as often as I want, I'm thinking, I don't want to come. Why back. would I do that? Yeah. He, he said, "Oh yes, but when you're when you're on the spirit side, you look at it differently." Uh-huh. Uh, yeah, you he, do. You know, like a lifespan of 80 years on Earth is like a blink of an eye on the other on right. the spirit side because they don't have linear time, and so right. uh, it, it's just like somebody who says, uh, "Well, I'm going to go and uh, climb Mount Everest," and uh, their friends might say, "Well, why would you want to do that?" And it's like, mm-hmm. "Well, it's a challenge. I'm going to learn something from it," and so that's how you look at it when you're on the other side, planning right. your incarnation. So. It, it, it much different perspective, um, and I'm looking forward yeah. to seeing that again. Yeah, and the people who've crossed over, um, they sometimes appear back. My parents appear back, especially in times of great danger, and they're they're like in their 30s. You know, they're they're not. You know, they both died of cancer. They don't appear in those bodies. They appear in bodies that are, um, you know, around whatever they choose to be, but usually around 30. And so they're, you know, they, in, in when when you're in heaven, you can appear as you want. You know, you don't have to, you don't have a body that's set. You know, you like we do in the physical. You know, that, that's we, very true. we can change it with plastic surgery, but we can't really yeah. change it easily with our mind. You know. Yeah, on the spirit side, you're, you're totally right, Susan. You can appear in whatever form you want. Some people mm-hmm. will appear. You know, if, if depending on the circumstances, if they're coming to visit somebody who's still their relative still on Earth, they will appear mm-hmm. in a way that they can be recognized. But but usually right, much yeah. not sort of the last days, but more so in their prime. Um, yeah. But w- 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 so it depends on who they're uh, connecting with. But uh, mm-hmm. oftentimes uh, they will appear, uh, you know, when they're on the spirit side in a in a, a human form in a life that they had lived in in the in past on Earth. Uh, you know, mm-hmm. wearing the costume and looking exactly like that. So one day when I was strolling down the uh, streets of the city on the spirit side, it really looked to me like I was in the middle of a costume ball because we had all these people with their mm-hmm. different attire, different colors, different eras. Um, and, and Albert said, well, they just they, they, they do that, and any time they want to change, they change. And if they don't mm-hmm. feel like looking like a human, they can just appear to be a, a globe of light. Yeah. But everyone is always recognizable because we all have a unique energy signature that, that is easily detectable. And so right. no matter what sort of costume they're wearing or form they take, everyone knows who they are. So it's very interesting. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, it's interesting to me, too, that, you know, when you study these um, cultures, these um, aborigine cultures or, you know, the it doesn't matter where on the planet, but they always talk about ancestor worship or, anse- you know, being respectful for your ancestors. And I think the reason that that's important is that the people in your bloodline are very important in your protection in your current life. And I'm sure there's people out there that may be listening that have no idea what I'm talking about, but your your guides and your, even though you may not have met them in this life, your people who are in your bloodline are very important for um for, they're often your guides. They're often your, um, you know, your future people in future lives that you're going to interact with, and and we all just kind of hang out together in a big soul family. Yeah, it's sort of a Albert's term was a soul group. He said we we we, we all belong to a soul group or maybe several, and and the people in the soul group sort of hang out together and they have lives mm-hmm. together. So you know, right. over a period of time, you know, one time you're the wife, and the next time you're the grandfather, and the next time you're mm-hmm. the son. Uh, you know, you keep That's on right. changing places and changing sex as, uh, you know, as mm-hmm. you go through your lives. And so these people are really are sort of your close group of friends on the spirit side, and they're very important to you. And, uh, and you know, they'll often be uh, 
your spirit guides, and, and if they're not, they will always be there to there for you if you want to choose to communicate with them. And if you can hear them, uh, they will also give you a help because it, it's like uh, you're all part of a, you know, like being mm-hmm. part of a close fraternity, and you always right. want to help each other. Yeah, and so, you know, if you're having a difficult relationship with somebody, it's best to just, like, send them love and and positive emotions, even if they're treating you very badly, because, number one, it's protective. It's very, very protective. If you give out love, then the people who are trying to hurt you go away. You know, they don't have any choice but to go away. And then the other thing is, is that if you have a difficult relationship with somebody in this life, it's better to try to resolve it because if you don't resolve it here, you're just going to have to deal with it later. I mean, these these things keep coming back. You know, you're the same situation will keep um, recreating itself until you figure out what you need to heal in you. And uh, we just interviewed Michael Rice on why is this happening to me again? And it's the idea that you know you really need to figure out what it is you need to do to change so that you're not having all this pain with all these different relationships. You know, the, these people love you and they're coming into your life to to kind of to kind of um push your buttons so that you'll get over whatever negative energies you need to get over. Exactly. And 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 it's deliberately planned that they will push your buttons because you Right. Have- You'll keep on facing these tests and, uh, until you learn your lesson, and then you can move right. on. And so, uh, it, you know, and, until you pass that point, you're going to keep on being confronted by these people, maybe in you know, same person or different people, but they, but mm-hmm. they're there to, as you say, to push your buttons and to see whether or not you can overcome your negative emotions and your typical reaction to them, and just shower them with love. And then when you sort of right. hit that point. And realize that um, you know they're just a, a soul there that's having a, a journey like you, and that uh, you need to recognize that you're not really separate from them. We're all sort of together. Mm-hmm. We're, we're all part of the source. Um, and once you recognize that and, and, and embrace love and control your negative reactions, um, then you're over that step and you're on for the next, you know, onto the next lesson. So mm-hmm. if things keep on recurring in your life, it's probably because you haven't passed the test. Yeah, you know, it's really true. Um, I, I had something funny happen this morning. You know those emails that you get from Nigeria that are telling you you have a relative that's trying to send you money? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, normally, you know, I just ignore them. But this time, I actually emailed him back. I said, hey, look, why don't you try doing something useful instead of trying to con people out of money? I said, you're only hurting yourself. Look up karma in Wikipedia. I don't know. I think that if everybody if everybody sent this person a similar message, maybe maybe they would look up karma and see what it meant. <laughs> you know, if you're out there trying to hurt everybody, you know, that's not going to be good for you. You ought to you ought to be a little more self-preserving. You know, uh, the more you hurt other people, the more you ultimately will be hurt. Yeah, exactly. So, yeah, you know, and, and did this person? It's real simple. Response? Not yet. No. <laughs> I doubt that they would if just one person does that. But just think if everybody did that. Yeah, exactly. Well, you that's, know, that, that, that's the, that's the way it works because you know thoughts it are is. powerful. Uh, thoughts from many people focused on the same thing are even more right. Powerful. Like and get so, over it. Yeah, Grow up. It. You know, yeah, quit quit being people. a yeah quit being a kindergartner in a in a you know in a college town. You know, just quit it. <laughs> you know. I hope oh, it works. My. Yeah. Well, I I put the idea out so that next time you see an email from Nigeria with your, you know, with trying to get your bank account number, maybe you can try to educate them. But, you know, in your book, what Albert said is really true. We're all in it together, and we have to help the people who are lagging behind. You know, we have to help them because we are in it together. But what's more important is that there's e- – an event coming up or a series of events coming up that is going to is going to be very important because either you're going to ascend into the new earth or it's not like you're going to stay here indefinitely albert's message is the same as the message we've gotten in 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 uh, meditation and that's it the earth isn't going to just hang out at the lower vibration forever you know it's it's not so it's not like you can just stay on the lower earth for the next 100,000 years. That That's not going to work. So this really is a graduation. And either you go up to the higher level or eventually 
you're probably not i mean the the lower energy earth is not going to be around for forever so you can't just stay down in the lower energy and keep with the old negative emotions and fighting and destroying the planet exactly and and that's why it seems to be and i wasn't giving any timetable from albert but it seems like there's a they're really concerned that the the, the time is, is has drawn near where we really have to get over this hump. And so, as I said, that's why they're really doing the full court press in terms of sending messages they are. to uh, to people. And they're actually, he said that they've they've uh, they've been asking for highly advanced souls to volunteer to come to Earth over the last over the last yep. number of years. To you know, very advanced souls who are there to lead by example and to and try to help uh, our fellow humans uh, sort of uh, get on the right path and. Uh, so it's, it's really a concerted effort, not only from the spirit side, but from our um, you know, ET friends uh, from you know other planets. Mm-hmm. They're also trying to help us, and uh, yep, they, 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 are. they really are. They really are concerned that we that we will destroy our civilization again, and they don't want that to happen. They've, they've mm-hmm. witnessed that too many times in the past. So it's like, okay, we really got to get our act together now, and uh, so here we are. So uh, everyone has to do their part. The people who know what the problem is and what the solution is uh, have to help those who aren't even aware of the problem. As I said. Some people just sort of stumble along in a in a in a sleepwalking stupor, and they don't mm-hmm. realize the, what they should be trying to do or or where they should be trying to get to. We have to inform yeah, them. Yeah, and I want to remind people that you know, 30 or 40 years ago, um, like Edgar Casey, the Sleeping Prophet, he was a photographer, but had a hard time making a living. M- many of the messengers from before were not well educated, but Who do I interview on Temple of Health radio show? Well, Mark Anthony, another attorney. His show is going to be on, I think, next week. Um, Garnet's an attorney. Um, We have chemists. We have biologists. We have a huge number of doctors. I mean, this message is coming from highly educated people. Businessmen, CEOs of companies have, have been guided to write books. You know, no matter what you look at, um, psychologists. Um, these, are, I mean, these are highly educated people that have been given this this mission through their soul to get this message out. So, what do you think's happening? I mean, we're not talking here about psychics that didn't graduate from high school, much less college. We're talking about extremely successful, highly educated people who all have the same message. I just wanted to point that out. <laughs> you know, it's, uh... yeah, no, I, I think that's very true, and I think it's a deliberate uh, uh, plan on, on the part of the, the, of the spirit realm is that, uh, uh, y- you know, if you have more highly educated people conveying the message. With credentials, of, yeah. Yeah, it, there's less of a chance that people will think they're just a kook. Um, right. And that, and that had happened, uh, you know, 30 or 40 years ago, uh, people who were spreading this message, uh, you know, a lot of people just thought they were lunatics or going senile or whatever. Yeah. And, so and they, they often it. they they often didn't have credentials because they th- their path was to be a spiritual channel or communicator and it wasn't necessary to go to college to do that so you know they often prayed and meditated a lot or had a very rich spiritual life but didn't necessarily have the money to go to college they were often in poverty too if you look at the previous you know the the real the people in the 40s and 50s that contributed to spiritual communication they they often were poor you know they they weren't rich it's very interesting yeah so, so so the characterization and the number of, of of channels throughout the world has been changing as you say and it's it's been upgraded in terms of credentials and uh, right to give it more force and effect i think with the general public and hopefully it is. it's working yeah yeah so you know we've been told that um just to give you some timelines that the planet on one timeline, there's multiple timelines. You have to understand that the timelines are going to converge, though. That's the thing you have to understand in the future. But we've been given the information that there's a good chance that planet Earth, the lower planet Earth, will not be around for more than 500 years. Well, that's not very long in the scheme of things. So you don't have that many lifetimes to reincarnate back here if you don't get it. So it would be just as easy to get it right now, I think. You know, it, it would be a lot better. And there's a graduation coming up. They call it a graduation, whereby and Jesus talked about that. You know, that the wheat shall be separated from the chaff. This is the graduation where the high and it has to do with vibrational level. The higher vibrational people will be able to ascend, and the lower vibrational people will not be able to ascend. 
I mean, that's basically what it comes down to. And ascension is going to this new earth, taking your physical body with you. You don't have to die to get there. And, um, you know, it's just something that most people don't believe is going to happen. It's just most people just go, no, that's not going to happen. That can't happen. But why are all these, why are all these different channels and, and messengers giving the same message? In fact, exactly the same message. Yeah, and that's it, what that's, gets me. Well, it, it, it's very, uh, it's gratifying for me because when I hear you say the messages you're getting from your meditation group and I hear other people say they're, they're getting similar messages, it just uh, ratifies and confirms what I've been hearing from Albert. And so it, it reinforces the, 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 the fact that the, it's the same message coming from spirit. It's mm-hmm. going through different channels. There may be different nuances to it depending on the, uh, you know, the, the interpretation that the listener puts right. on it. Um, but the, the, the core of the message is the same. And, and that just that gives me, uh, it, it validates what I've been hearing from Albert. Uh, I'm, I'm happy to hear that. Uh, and it, it just c- confirms that um, you know, the, the message is coming because we really need to get moving. We need to uh, right. you know, help them give humanity a kick in the pants to get going down the right path. That's right. And, you know, I, I personally believe, and this is from what we've been told by different, different um, communicators, spirit communicators, but I, I really believe that there is a, there, there's going to be a time coming where there's a lot of natural disasters, okay? I mean, intensifying. We've had more natural disasters, but they're going to culminate. And not that the ascension is linked directly to this, it's just happening to be at the same time. So a lot of the people that aren't ready to go higher may die during this time period because there's going to be a lot of things that, you know, earthquakes, volcanoes, and tsunamis and other natural disasters occurring at once. And, and we know from history that there's an, there's an interval of these natural disasters that occur every so many thousands of years. So, you know, there, there's a history of this that occurs. So it would be reasonable to assume that we're probably going to have it again. I mean, you know, you, you, the, the factors in this are not controlled by humans. You know, there, nothing we can do can change this. This is something much, you know, much greater than what we are. So, um, so basically, uh, when you look around and you see the government buying, you know, a million meals ready to eat and the post office buying ammo and all this talk of martial law and, you know, you, you, you see all the, the people, um, the preppers, you know, there's even, um, TV shows on prepping, you know, being prepared for what's coming. You know, you, you just can't, I mean, it's laughable to think that there's nothing happening now. And and the other thing that really I saw yesterday, and I, I went around to tell different people in my office, I said, look, China, in 2010, it was revealed that China was building cities inland for millions of people, millions of apartments, and they're called ghost cities. Now, why in the hell would they do that? You know, what's that about? And it, if you put everything together, you understand that governments – that that even though the government's not telling you what's going to happen, they have a website called ready.gov. You know, why do they have a website called ready.gov? And it basically informs you on how to prepare your family for disasters, like a big disaster. So I think it's hilarious that all of these things are happening at the same time, and so many people are simply asleep. They're simply asleep. They think that just because their life is the way it is now, it's always going to be that way. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And uh, you, you mentioned about the the increase in natural disasters like floods or hurricanes, earthquakes, and so on. That yeah. is uh, that is happening. And uh, as a matter of fact, in um, in my third book, which hasn't been published yet, I actually got a chance to speak with the consciousness that is Mother Earth, Gaia. Mm-hmm. And uh, you know, whether you're, it may seem strange, but our planet has its own consciousness. And the message from uh, from Gaia to me was that look at uh, they've had to. She's had to put up with a lot of uh, abuse from humans. You know all the pollution that we've been keeping on her. You know her rivers and lakes. Yeah, and absolutely. And, and the atmosphere and the soil, and she's getting tired of it. And she knows that humans have to sort of get their act together. Um, you know, we, we're part of her family, uh, along with the, the other creatures that, that live, live on the, her planet, on her surface. 
and uh, she's uh, she, she she loves all of us and wants us all to get along, but she's very annoyed about what the humans have been doing to each other and mm-hmm. to her and to the other creatures. Right. And at some point, she's just going to uh, lash out. She has the capability of lashing out through natural disasters. To she sort does. Of, uh, give us a lesson, and and we're getting some lessons right now. I mean, you look at the those amazing uh, huge floods in in Texas in the last uh, mm-hmm. few days. Um, you know, earthquakes in Nepal. Um, you know, all over the place. She, she has yeah. the capability of lashing back at us. And she's trying to send us a message, and hopefully we will hear it and, and recognize it for what it is. And it's just all part yeah. of the push, the push to get humanity to to discard their negative emotions, uh, you know, quit abusing uh, Mother Earth and the other creatures, mm-hmm. and increase our vibrations. And uh, if necessary, she can uh, do a lot of damage to uh, our civilization. Uh, she doesn't want to, yeah. but she can. Yeah. So what's the name of your third book? My third book is called Dance of Heavenly Bliss. Great. What it, what it is is more astral journeys with my spirit guide, Albert. Uh, and Great. it takes me to see uh, different things in our universe. And to, and, mm-hmm. very, very, and and most importantly, I get to meet a lot of souls on the spirit side who have had incarnations on Earth. In some cases, very famous people. In other cases, just ordinary people, but with an amazing mm-hmm. story to tell. And there's a mm-hmm. lesson in it for each one of my visits. There's a lesson in it for me and for everyone else. And and so it, right. it's really a, a a sequel to the, the my second book. And it's uh, uh, so it, it it'll be published sometime uh, released uh, late this year or early next year. Well, make sure we get a copy, and we'll have you back on the show for that one. I, I certainly will, Susan. That would be fun. Yeah, it is important right now for people. The, what I like about your books is that they're so easy to read. Um, you know, Albert's a great teacher. He's someone who can just communicate without, you know. I mean, some of the stuff earlier in the 1940s, you know, the Alice Bailey books and the, you know, a lot of the stuff coming in, even some of the stuff um, recently is much more difficult to understand. But your your material is very simple to understand, which is really good because it means that, you know the teacher is very good. That was so. one of the one of the directions I got from Albert early on when mm-hmm. I was writing my first manuscript. He said, he said, forget about using uh, esoteric, you know, legal right. language like you're used to doing as a lawyer. He said, yeah. make it very uh, easy to read, easy to understand, so that the, mm-hmm. the people on Main Street can understand it easily and and grasp what I'm telling them. Uh, so don't use a lot of big words. Uh, you know, I, I want everyone to be able to understand it very easily. So that was my mission. Mm-hmm. I hopefully I've, I've, I've pulled it off, but uh, uh, that was you did. Really, you, you did. Know, thank yeah. You. yeah, yeah. And the other thing is the the concept of akashic records. Um, you know, we've known for a while that everything is recorded in the akashic, so that when you want to find out what happened, you can go there and and you can review the records. So. Um, so you want to talk a little bit about the Akashic Records and how that that is um, important to understand that that exists that you know you don't you don't get away with anything here you know there's no secrets there's absolutely no secrets everything's being recorded I mean it's the ultimate NSA situation except that they're not trying to hurt you with it <laughs> they're just trying to educate you <laughs> yeah exactly well as you say the Akashic Records contain a record of every life that's ever been lived anywhere in the mm-hmm. universe. And so right. when I, I got an opportunity to go there a couple of times. First time he took me to show me a couple of segments from my current life where mm-hmm. I, I learned the lesson that um, you have to be very careful about what you say and what you do because even mm-hmm. off-the-cuff remarks can cause a tremendous amount of hurt to someone else. Um, and, right. and, and that that was sort of like a preview of, of, of a life review, and we all have a life review after we cross mm-hmm. over to the spirit right. Yeah, We get to review the, review the past, immediate life, and not only to watch it sort of like in a, as a 3D movie, but we actually get to hear the thoughts and feel the emotions of the mm-hmm. people we interact with, which is very right. educational. And it really, uh, you know, it hits you over the head with a two-by-four because as you're going through your life, you say you can mm-hmm. see where you've caused a lot of hurt and anguish uh, to other people, even if it was unintentional, uh, just by right. being careless with what you say or what you do. So it was very educational. Right. Um, I also got to see some of my past lives, uh, you know, a few segments. Albert was very had a very specific agenda for me, and I wasn't allowed to sort of uh, lollygag around the cash right, yeah. which you, you you could do forever because uh, there's so many things you can see not only about mm-hmm. your own past lives but about other people's past lives. Right. And as you yeah. say, it's all open. There's no secrets. You can't hide anything from anyone because it's all mm-hmm. there in, uh, in full view in the Akashic Records. So uh, when I crossed back over to the spirit side, he said I could spend as much time there 
as I wanted to, keeping mm-hmm. in mind that there is really no time on the spirit side. So, uh, right. so anyway, it's something to look forward to. But but it, it's really a, an eye opener, and uh, um, it, it it really does help you after you finish mm-hmm. each life to have this review, and then you can see, okay, this is where I went off track. Uh, this is where mm-hmm. I made some mistakes, and uh, next time I'm going to do better. And so it, it's a it's a learning tool, not meant to make you feel bad. Uh, but uh, you know, and you, you end up sort of uh, judging your own performance because no one else judges mm-hmm. you. Uh, you know, right. the source or the God does not judge us when we die. It's just our own self judgment, and, it, and it's a learning tool. Like you know, how can I do better, uh, and what should I try next time to sort of learn the lessons that I failed to learn in this past life. And you and I have something in common. Um, your mother was very, very religious, Catholic, and very narrow view of that religion as the the only truth and my mother was like a scientist she was science was her religion we were methodists but i i'm not even sure she really believed in god um except as maybe a concept but uh mom passed on and it was funny cuz one of my friends is a great medium i mean fabulous and he was t- teaching me taking me to see um Caputi who is the long island medium and and so we were watching one of her shows because I'd never seen her. And he said to me, I want to be just like her. And I said, Steve, you're way better than her. I mean, you are you are just so much better than she is because she's doing a little tiny thing. You know, she's doing a small thing that's very, very important but very narrow. And what you're you're capable of doing is really, really pretty incredible. I said, go ahead and channel my mother because my mother passed over. Well, he channeled my mother for an hour. And my mother was very threatened by my spirituality. You know, I became vegetarian. I was meditating all the time. I had these groups. I was writing spiritual books. And she was threatened by it because we had a great relationship, she thought, until I became spiritual. And then we were too different, and she was threatened by it. So she came back in through Steve and said that she did not appreciate what my job was when she was here. You know, she she said, I was just threatened by it all. She said, now I understand what your job is and how important it is. And then she said, she gave me some advice. She said, I would not have said this to you when you were, when I was living, but you need to meditate more. This is what my mother said. You need to meditate more. We meditate for, you know, two or three hours every Sunday, but she's right. I probably should meditate daily, every day. And she says, if you would meditate more, this would help you a great deal. So, you know, you can tell your story about your mother, too, that that she also, you met her, and she also, um, when when your parents go on, they know everything. I mean, they know everything in the Akashic Records. They know any secrets that you tried to hide from them. They know immediately. And all of our parents, because they're on the spirit side, are capable of an infinite number of things simultaneously. So they're, they're, all the restrictions that they had when they were here are gone, and they're really, really, really incredible people, no matter what they were like when they were your parents. Exactly, and I have a, a similar tale, as you noted. Uh, my mother was a very, very religious lady, and she really enforced, uh, made sure her family followed all the rules. Uh, mm-hmm. you know, she was a feisty Irish lady who was determined to get her husband and five children to heaven even if she had to drag us kicking and screaming. <laughs> right, right. And, and so, uh, so, so when, I, when I did have the, uh, <clears throat> met up with her and some of my other, uh, my, my, my dad and my brother and other relatives, on my first visit to the spirit side, I was a little apprehensive because, I, I, uh, because of her background, and I was yeah. afraid that she wouldn't, have, uh, would, would be, uh, wouldn't approve. <laughs> wouldn't approve of what I've written in, in, in her right. book. And then she, but she just reassured me. She said, you know, if I was still back on earth, I wouldn't like what you wrote about the church in your book. Um, but now mm-hmm. here, here I'm in the spirit side. I see the whole picture, and what you said was just dead on right. And thank you for doing right. that. And please yeah. carry on. So that was, that was great reassurance, and it just demonstrates, yeah. like as with your mother, is that the 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 the, the, the character of somebody, your, one of your loved ones on Earth, will can be quite a bit different when they're back in the spirit side, where they right. see the full picture. They have all the information. They do. They do. So, and that will allow one out there to forgive anybody who's dead. Okay, because now they're not in a situation where they've got all those things on them and all those judgments and all those, you know, all the things. They might have had addictions. They might have been alcoholic. But you can forgive all that because they're they're not like that now. No, exactly. So that's, and, that makes it easier to forgive and just release them and 
say, you know, I understand that that's not who you were, who you are. You know, if you had faults that hurt me, that you're not like that now. And so. In fact, to take it to an extreme example, if if if, if somebody murders you on Earth. When you mm-hmm. both are back on the spirit side, there's no hatred or animosity. You no, don't have there any isn't. Need for revenge, right? It's just unconditional love, which is right. hard for people here to accept that, but that's the way it, it is. is. Yeah. It is. Yeah. It's very true. Yeah, it's very true. And often there's karmic reasons that you were murdered. You know, oh, it's sure. it's like yeah. it's it's not just random. That's what you have to understand. And if you could see the big picture, you understand there's a lot of true justice and true learning going on. Um, and true karma going on. Karma doesn't exist in the higher dimensions. There's no karma in the fifth dimension at all because nobody's doing things like murdering each other up there. But karma is does still exist on this plane until we can raise this plane up to higher dimensions. Yeah, exactly. And like so. you say, the, uh, when we plan our lives, we don't plan them randomly. We have very specific purposes. Right. And most of the time, it's to try to uh, face a lesson that we failed to, to pass in the past, uh, to deal with uh, past karmic actions. I mean, it's all sort of carefully planned out. It doesn't always play out that way because we don't remember what's in our life plan once we're here and we have free will right. to act. Uh, and that's, yeah. why, that's why it takes us, in a lot of cases, many, many lives to get through all the lessons we want to learn and experience right. the things we need. Uh, and so, and, and for some people, they can do it quickly. Others, they they take uh, many, many lives. Uh, so, and, and so, uh, as Albert teasingly said to me, sometimes he said, uh, you know, uh, you're you're a bit of an old soul, but that probably just means you're a slow learner. <laughs> That's funny. Well, you know, the Course in Miracles says that exactly. The Course in Miracles says the curriculum is the same for everyone. The time you take to learn it is up to you. Yeah, there are there are no timetables, there's no deadlines. You can take right. as long as you want to learn it, or you can as quickly. That's right. Entirely up to you, and everyone is really on a different pace. We're not on the same right. pace, and so exactly, uh, you know. And so when you're, you know, one of the reasons why you shouldn't, uh, when you look at, at people on this planet and they're doing things you don't approve of, you shouldn't be judgmental about them because you don't right. know what they've done in the past, how many lives they've had, or what their current right, path is. Right, exactly. It, That's it, very it, true. We're not in a position to judge other people, nor should they be judging us. That's right. Well, we're coming up on the end of the hour. Um, Garnet, would you like to give your contact information? Yeah, absolutely. Um, all of my uh, links to all my uh, uh, social media sites like Facebook, Twitter, Google+, and LinkedIn, they're all on my website. My website is com. But because that's so hard to spell, and remember, if you uh, if you try dancing on a stamp dot com or just Google dancing on a stamp, you'll get to my to my web page. Yeah, and there that's I've got good. information on um, the, there. You can access a book video for each of my books. You can download a free excerpt, um, and, and there's buy links to all the popular uh, online bookstores where you just have to click, and you can get right to the page where my my books are for sale. My email address is on my website, and I'd be happy to hear uh, comments or questions from your listeners, Susan. Great. Well, thanks so much for joining us, Garnet, and please let us know when your next book is out. We'll have you back on when that's available. I appreciate you joining us. Thank you for having me. I've enjoyed every minute. All righty. Well, we've been interviewing Garnet Schulhauser, his book, Dancing Forever with Spirit, Astonishing Insights from Heaven, and his first book, Dancing on a Stamp. Very good reading for anybody who's actually interested in what's happening in the next few years that will affect you. Um, and then uh, great information uh, from Spirit on what we're doing. I often say that nobody in the third dimension can really understand what's happening. You do have to have a perspective from a higher dimensional being to understand what we're going through, and that's because we're kind of stuck in time and space here. And, and so please read this. It's one of the best books I've read on the simple view of what's happening Um Not that it's simple, it's not, but it's explained in a manner that everybody can understand. Next week, we'll have Michael Rice on, uh, First Century Aramaic Forgiveness and its Relationship to Physiology. And then Dr. Jim Roach will be on God's House Calls, Finding God Through My Patients. And then another attorney on the 20th, Mark Anthony, Evidence of Eternity, Communicating with Spirits for Proof of the Afterlife. Um, Please join us every week for Temple of Health radio show. Also, if you're in Atlanta, next um, next the third Thursday of June, we're going to have Lee Colson back. 
Lee is a spiritually based um, medical provider who also is a tracker, and he spent a lot of times in the North Georgia mountains and other places tracking Bigfoot. And Bigfoot has some spiritual implications, um, in fact, multidimensional implications. So if you're interested in that, come hear him on the third Thursday at the Dunwoody office um, at 7.15 at, at night. Thanks so much for joining us. This is Dr. Susan Cobb with Temple of Health Radio Show.